Wow, thank you, Dana. Uh, I do want to thank everybody and thank you for that warm introduction. I do want to point one thing out. Um, when Dr. Mitchell was talking about the annex, uh, I don't know if y'all noticed, but Scott went ahead and pulled out a piece of paper and he's already drawn it and that scares me because I know we're going to meet later so I'm sure he's already got that. But Ryan's already figuring out how to make it non-symmetrical and Brittany's already working on the finishing. So you've already started, a, you started an animal. Um, it's truly a momentous occasion. I do want to acknowledge my parents. I appreciate them coming 1,100 miles to see this. They, it's because they've been hearing me talk about it for the last eight and a half years and only talk and not complain, but I appreciate them making the trip. Um, it's taken a long time to get here, uh, almost nine years since we started this. Uh, we, um, we embarked on the task of replacing our facility that we had over on Ironton because we knew it was time. And it started out like other, many other facility plans do. We talked to, Scott and I talked on the back of napkins and our management team, Ronnie and Steve, and a lot of us started talking about what do we need to do? How does this thing need to look? This is a major cotton production area in Texas, so how do we do it? You talk about how many square feet, how many people, how many instruments, and all that kind of thing. And uh, we did design a design charrette in Memphis. We had all a bunch of staff in there. We figured out, trying to figure out what we wanted to do. But we wanted to make this one special. We wanted features in this one that we hadn't had before. And Dana's right about one thing, and my staff will tell you, uh, sometimes um, they don't always enjoy it, but they know that I do, not, I do not go status quo. We always raise the bar. And so we knew this one needed to do that. So um, we checked around Lubbock for a few areas to see where we wanted to build it. And then a few things happened on the way to fruition that kind of changed the trajectory of the whole thing and the essence of the facility, really. Um, we embarked on automation. When we first started the design here, we, hadn't, we didn't have automation. We were talking about what we needed to do, but it wasn't, wasn't a reality yet. Um, we put the first system ever in Abilene, Texas, and that kind of told us, okay, we need to be designing this new facility in Lubbock with the future of that in mind. It's, it's hard enough to design for the present. It's really difficult to design for the future, but we knew we had to do that. Um, we also wanted to design a more efficient way to move the cotton through, to remove it to the bell presses. And everything that we do, we wanted to do it better. So we had to come up with new designs of things that really weren't even in place yet. So we said, all right, let's figure out a way to make this happen. And we took the time to think, how can we make the operation work better for future operational challenges? We opted for different kinds of ways to do things, knowing that it was going to be a risk but we did our homework and tried to make it happen. One major vision that we wanted to do is we wanted to conserve energy. We knew that, you know, not only was it a task in the USDA, and we use a lot of energy in what we do, but it's the right thing to do. So we wanted to be good stewards of the, of the producer's funding. They pay us to be efficient and effective, and we wanted to make sure we put that in there. Um, we wanted to use recycled materials. We wanted to use some of the natural things from the area. Uh, we had a lot of conversations with Scott and Park Hill uh, about how to design ways to be as energy efficient as possible. We talked about HVAC and insulation and lighting and all kinds of that. Many of that you'll see if you tour through. And then there was the location. None of the locations that we found around town really fit exactly what we were after. We knew we were a unique kind of weird facility that required some things and we just couldn't find really what we wanted. And about that time, I had been thinking anyway and talking some about needing to outreach more to colleges and universities, to leverage that talent, to help us maybe solve some of the problems that we weren't able to solve, take advantage of those young minds as best we could, and just be the kind of community outreach entity that we needed to be. So on a drive back some, from somewhere, I don't remember where I was traveling like I do all the time, and I was thinking about the project and I had an epiphany and I said, what if we could put this thing on Texas Tech campus? I mean, it's right there in Lubbock. Tech's a major agriculture university. I had a relationship already with Eric Kay and doing some research, and I thought, how cool would that be? Um, and how cool would it be to kind of establish a three-prong approach of education, research, and employment if we can make that happen? And so I said, Scott, what do you think about that? He's like, man, that's a great idea. 
I said, yeah, I got one problem. I have no contacts at Tech other than you. I mean, you and, and Ryan <laughs> and Brittany are the only three people I really know. And he goes, well, I know some folks. So uh, we got, a, we got a, a, a meeting with Mike Molina. Started talking to Mike about it. Mike said, well, I'm going to see if I can get you a meeting with Bob Duncan. And so we, we worked a little bit through that. We met Christina Butts, had some good discussions, and, and fortunately, uh, Mr. Duncan took the meeting, which he didn't have to do. And I was wondering if he would take it, because I thought, you know, this is going to be a weird kind of concept. But he did, and we started having a conversation, and that conversation turned into more conversations, and we kind of realized that this was the right thing to do. Now, it took a long time and a very arduous process. Eight years, eight and a half years is a long time to make anything happen. Uh, nothing happens fast in government, as Bruce will allude to, but the fact that everybody was willing to try this had never been done before. We'd never owned a facility before from construction up. We'd certainly never had a partnership with a university to do it. And to try to figure out how to make that work um, took a lot of time. So meetings spawned more work and months turned into years. Um, sometimes we wondered if we would get to that point. And then another thing happened. And I'm going to pause here because I want to quote this as a, this is a resume builder for me for whatever may happen in my future. Only I could contract a one-of-a-kind, world-class, state-of-the-art building during a global pandemic. So I got that one. I don't know if anybody else in here can state that, but I, I got that one. So I got that in my legacy. Um, we, contacted, we contracted the facility with Lee Lewis Construction and throughout the struggles of supply chains and labor shortages and COVID outbreaks and cost increases and everything else that came with it, they did a fantastic job in getting this facility built. And I want to echo Scott's comments earlier um, when he acknowledged the job that our super, the superintendent Brett Richardson did. Brett, I think, is still back there. Uh, first class, the commitment he made to making the, the project what it should be uh, was great. And thanks also to Amy Bollinger, Jason Smith, and all the Lee Lewis's construction company. So now that we have the facility, uh, it's going to serve as a flagship for our program. It's going to pay forward many great things. Uh, great things from new innovations and cutting edge energy conservation features. It's going to lead the way for us to do bigger and better things in other locations. It's going to be great things coming from the partnerships that we have in research, education, and employment. Great things coming from the continued evolution of innovation and technology that our staff work very hard. Much of what you're going to see in here is what we developed in-house. This is our staff developing these things. And I want to, I want to extend my uh, hearty gratitude to our, to our engineering team and all of our staff for working to create much of this. We can go out and just ask somebody else to create it for us. We created the concepts and worked with companies, great companies like Adapt Tech and others that have worked with us to make this happen. One of the visions for the facility that I think is going to be great things is we wanted it to be a teaching facility and a learning facility. It could be in a class and office. We could have just made it in a class and office and it would have still been impressive. But we wanted it to be more than that. So Fields like, and I think Dr. Mitchell alluded to it, fields like engineering and analytics, textile technology, all those kinds of construction, all those kinds of aspects, we wanted to be able to, to use this facility to help teach and pay it forward, have classes here from universities and colleges, have industry group meetings here, so that the decisions that they make that can create better things for the industry can happen here with us. We'll, we want to have our own meetings here. We want to make this kind of a, a, a community type thing where great things can happen that spawn from this. So what we really wanted to do is pay it forward and really create We've got it over here on some of our taglines. Our, one of our taglines is to cultivate a legacy of excellence. And that's what we wanted to do with this facility. So I'd be remiss if I didn't make a couple of quick thank yous before we get to the uh, main part of ribbon cutting. Thank you to the USDA team, first and foremost. Um, so many of our staff that contributed directly to the design of the facility, the process of getting it contracted and completed, far too many for me to name individually, but a few that I'd, I'd have to point out, Ronnie Robbins, Monica Alexander, my two associate deputies, uh, Beverly Brown, who's not here, who's the contracting officer that worked directly with APHIS, Jennifer Turpin, who's been there every step of the way, Steve Grantham, who is not here, who was our main engineer that worked hand in hand with Scott and his group, Roger Aldridge on that engineering team who is here somewhere, I'm not sure where Roger is in the back, um, all, of the, all of the grading division, Danny Martinez, our area director here in Lubbock, and his staff, who you'll see a lot of later today. 
our IT division, our standardization and engineering division, our administrative staff, our quality assurance division, our market news division. It was a total team effort to bring all of this and everything that it does to fruition. Thank you also to the APHIS Realty team. I think we have Keith O'Brien here. I'm not sure if we have anybody else, but did a great job in helping us because, uh, trust me, there are a lot of government regulations involved in doing something like this. Um, Keith put up with some of my fits that I pitched as well as other people. I did pitch a few, so thank you for that. Big thank you, again, like Dana said, to the seasonal staff that we have here. Great staff that we have in Lubbock, Texas that's dedicated to doing what they do. And thank you to all of the permanent seasonal staffs that came in this week to help us get ready for this. It was a total team effort. We had a lot of people here, still have a lot of people here. The design team, Scott, um, and all the Fanning and Fanning Associate team, as Scott mentioned earlier, he's been on many journeys uh, with us, the design class and facilities since the 80s. Uh, we've gotten better and better, I think, and we'll continue to get better, but I think this probably takes the cake so far. He and I have worked on a lot of the projects together. To Ryan Wilkins, Brittany Wilkins, Robert Rollo, and the entire Park Hill team that helped us along the way. I appreciate all that y'all have done to, to, to help design a beautiful and functional facility and your attention to detail. I used to think, I'm an engineer, and I used to think that I had an attention to detail until I did punch lists with Ryan and Brittany, and I've never seen punch lists that, that came out of that. I, I would just skip over stuff, and, and I'd be looking back, and they'd still be behind me looking for stuff, so thank you for that. Thanks for the Texas Tech team, President Skobanek, Chancellor Mitchell, uh, Vice Chancellors Billy Breedlove and Christina Butts, Project Manager Rick Rashida. Where's Rick? Rick was here when there were 4 a.m. concrete pours with Brett many, many, many times, and we didn't have anybody here, and Rick was here, and sometimes Rick had to turn the trucks away, and that wasn't always a popular thing, but I appreciate the fact that Rick was here every step of the way, so thank you, Rick, and many, many others from, from the FP and C team. Um, thank you to former Congressman Conway. You were here, we were all standing right out here when this was just a lot of mounds of dirt and a kind of a, a vision and a concept, and we could kind of picture what was coming, so thank you for your support. Um, Thank you to Robert Duncan for taking the meeting and supporting us on this and seeing the vision with us. I appreciate that and the commitment early on uh, and the mutual benefit that we had. Lee Lewis Construction, especially Brad, Amy, Jason, and all the subcontractors, you'll see a lot of their names on at acknowledgement boards inside, so thank you for all of that. The commissioning agents and everybody that tested the systems to make sure that they worked as they're specified, uh, and that was all the way up until probably this morning, so thank you for that. Um, and thanks to, to our administrator, Bruce Summers, our leadership uh, in AMS, MRP, and USDA for their support of this project because of its uniqueness. It was something that had never been done before. And I had to talk to Bruce and, and explain that to him. And Bruce didn't have to take the, he didn't have to take and carry the water uh, to make this happen because we had, to, we had to go all the way to the secretary's office to explain what it was we were doing and why. And so he was willing to do that. And I appreciate that. Finally, I want to thank the, the cotton industry. Leadership, Sean, Gary Adams, a lot of you are here um, for your continued confidence in what we do. It's a partnership. You know, we, we do our best to try to deliver the services that you need, that we know you need. We take it seriously. I tell our staff all the time we've got 100% of the market, but that does not mean that we should not be continue, continue to strive to be the best we can be because we're on top. I won't use the Alabama football analogy that I promised I wouldn't use, but when you're on top, you got a target on your back all the time. And so there are a lot of people that watch what we do carefully. We, we, this, this facility will have more visitors through it probably than any other facility, at least, at least as many as our headquarters building in Memphis, and that's national and international. We've already started having that. So everybody will want to see how we do what we do. From, from the global as aspect, and, and we're very proud of the fact that they want to see that. This was a very special project to me, not only that it took a, four, a, a fourth of my career to complete, uh, never thought it would have taken that long, wasn't our plan, but our team remained steadfast when we hit a few snags in the road and getting to the finish line, but we knew how important it was. So I think it's uh, something I'm very proud of, I'll be very proud of. Moving forward, uh, as some of you know, I'm planning to call it a career in a, about six months. Uh, so this is kind of my biggest, probably biggest project. I don't plan to build another one in the next six months, I can tell you that. 
So this is kind of uh, going to serve as my mic drop, and I couldn't think of a better way uh, to finish it out in the next few months than to be able to open this building and show everybody what we do. And I wish we had a four million, five million bill crop to push through it. I really do. But I know that we'll have them in the future, and I know this office will be ready for it. So thank you again, for all of you, for your attendance today, your interest in our program, operations. I saw a lot of people that I know that came a long way. I really appreciate that. Uh, it, it means a lot. So now, if y'all will all join me, um, as soon as we adjourn this, what we're going to do is we're going to walk around the building. We're not going to take you through it yet. We're going to hold it out just a little bit more. We're going to walk around the building to the front. We're going to do the official ribbon cutting uh, of the Lubbock Cotton Classification Complex. Uh, following that ribbon cutting, we're going to begin the tour starting with group one that we've got uh, uh, one group kind of set aside. And then I think everybody should have received group tags that have groups. We're going to keep...